I threw my entire life savings into crypto back in late 2022 after the collapse of FTX. And over the next year, Bitcoin went on to skyrocket, going from just $16,000 to at its height, $49,000. As well as since then, a ton of other crypto projects have went up 5X, 10X or more. Today in this video, I'm gonna share what I believe is coming next and why I firmly believe that the bull market isn't over, but it's just getting started. This is what I would consider the preseason to the real bull run that's coming later in this year. And I'll lay out my case in this video as to why I believe those things, because it's not just me being optimistic. It's not just me being like, oh, guys, don't worry. Just trust me. It's all going to work out. No, I have some solid market fundamentals that I built this belief off of. I'm going to share those in this video, and then you can look at those and judge for yourself what you didn't want to believe. And as a quick refresher, I have three different goals this cycle. My base goal is to make around a thousand percent gains for my overall portfolio during this cycle. That'd be a 10 X every thousand dollars I invest turns into 10,000. My mid goal is to make a 5,000% gain for my overall portfolio this cycle. And that'd be a 50 X meaning every thousand dollars I invested would turn into $50,000. My upper stretch Hail Mary goal would be to do a 10,000% gain for my overall portfolio during this cycle. That would be a hundred X or every thousand dollars I invest invested turned into $100,000. Last cycle, my overall portfolio ended up doing around 4,000%. All right, here's exactly why I believe we're going to see another crypto bull run kick off in 2024. I have 12 different bullish catalysts that I'm looking at in the market right now, and I'm just going to go through each one. Bullish catalyst number one is the inflows from the Bitcoin spot ETF. Despite what you may have heard on social media, the Bitcoin spot ETFs have been radically successful. Anyone saying otherwise is probably just saying that because the price of Bitcoin went down. Out of the top Top four fastest ETFs to ever reach a billion dollars in assets. Number one is one of those Bitcoin spot ETFs. Number two is a gold ETF. And number three and four are two of the other Bitcoin spot ETFs. So out of the top four, three of the four are the Bitcoin spot ETFs. Now, some people were pointing out that a lot of the overall volume from these spot Bitcoin ETFs were coming from GBTC outflows, meaning people that were selling GBTC. If you don't know what that is, it was basically last cycle, a low quality way for you to get exposure to Bitcoin if you were like, you know, wanting to buy it on the stock market or whatever. And the reason I call it low quality is because typically in a bull market, it would sell at a premium. So meaning uh, you're buying Bitcoin at a higher price than it actually was. And in a bear market, it sells at a discount, meaning everyone in it who's wanting to sell their Bitcoin, if they want to sell, they're going to sell at a discount because the price of GBTC is actually lower than the price of Bitcoin, meaning they would take a huge loss. This led to not only a lot of people not selling the GBTC because they just didn't want to take that loss and they were hoping in the future it would get converted into an ETF, but also it led to a lot of speculators buying at that discounted price, hoping again that eventually this would get turned into an ETF. And now that it has gotten turned into an ETF, of course, we're seeing a lot of outflows as people are either capitalizing on that trade they made where they bought it at a discount and now they're finally taking profits or people that were stuck in it can finally get out and they're selling. And my first point around all this is that the inflows or the people that are actually buying all these other ETFs are mostly offsetting the outflows that are coming from GBTC. So that's good. Second point would be that GBTC outflows will likely slow down over the coming weeks. This is basically just just a giant unlock event and the market will even out over time. The third point is that as far as Wall Street is concerned, they don't care if the volume is coming from people selling or people buying. They are literally happy either way. Either way to them, this is incredibly uh, impressive and they're like, wow. To put it into context, these ETFs did $10 billion in volume in their first three days alone. Out of the other 500 ETFs launched throughout all of 2023 combined, so you take all those ETFs and you combine them, they combined did only 450 $50 million in volume with the best one doing $45 million in volume, meaning the Bitcoin ETFs are absolutely dominating. And this is only expected to ramp up over time. Keep in mind that many of the largest traditional institutions are not able to jump into these ETFs on day one. They move slow, they have to prep their clients, they gotta get all their ducks in a row and all their paperwork done, and they gotta do their due diligence on these investments. And typically this process could take anywhere from a couple months to sometimes over a year. So there's a lot of incoming capital that hasn't yet been unlocked that's gonna slowly start to trickle into these ETFs. At the same time that we expect these GBTC outflows to eventually start slowing down. Meaning over the next year, we should see Bitcoin ETF inflows actually
actually make a meaningful impact on the overall price of Bitcoin. This, of course, again, won't happen all at once. It's going to be more of like a trickle effect over the coming year. But there's a lot of really smart people who know a lot more about ETFs than I do that are saying that this ETF is a big deal, that Wall Street is really pumped about the results that they're seeing, and that a lot of these larger financial institutions are working double time to try to jump through all those hoops they need to jump through so that they can allocate into this Bitcoin ETF. And I've listened to a ton of podcasts. I've read a bunch of different like reports on like how much capital they think that these institutions are going to end up allocating into these Bitcoin ETFs. And I've heard anywhere from 1% to 5%. Whether it's 1% to 5%, it doesn't matter. We're talking trillions and trillions of new dollars, trillions and trillions of dollars of liquidity coming into the crypto ecosystem over the next coming years. Bullish catalyst number two is TradFi marketing the ETF. As mentioned earlier, TradFi is taking note of the volumes that these Bitcoin ETFs are putting out. And each of these institutions wants to be the one to own the Bitcoin ETF, the number one one, the biggest one, the one that everyone wants to use. And the reason they want to be that number one ETF is because they want those sweet, sweet fees. If this is all true, if there's two to 5% of these portfolios getting allocated into Bitcoin, they want them allocating into their ETF so they could be the one collecting those fees. And the early days after the launch of the ETF are really crucial for establishing that lead. So you can count on all of these different firms with Bitcoin ETFs to be promoting and pushing these ETFs to their client bases hard. That's going to mean Bitcoin ETF commercials, which we've already seen a bunch of Bitcoin commercials going out from some of these larger institutions. It's going to mean a bunch of client research that's, you know, gets published so that our clients can understand these things and have confidence investing in these things. It's going to mean uh, portfolio recommendations where they're going to say, hey, you want to put X amount of your portfolio allocated towards Bitcoin, or you want to put Y amount of your portfolio allocated into this Bitcoin ETF. And I'm sure they'll adopt a lot of our like different narratives that we play out in the crypto space. It's digital gold, or it's an uncorrelated asset to the stock market market, et cetera. The big point is that the biggest and most powerful financial entities on the planet just became crypto's number one marketing arm. I can promise you if you are not bullish enough. Bullish catalyst number three is that we're about to go through an entire rate cutting cycle. The Fed has indicated that we should see about three different rate cuts going into 2024. And rate cuts are bullish for stocks in crypto. They allow more liquidity to flow into the system. They allow cheaper access to capital and less incentive for these trillions and trillions of dollars to be locked up sitting in treasuries. And it's expected not only that we see rate cuts in 2024, but we actually see further rate cuts as well in 2025. And again, if you don't understand rate cuts and why they're bullish, one thing you can almost always count on is that when they raise rates, when the Fed raises rates, that the prices of stocks and crypto is going to go down. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, when the Fed lowers rates, you can almost always expect that the prices of stocks and crypto is going to go up. So if we do, in fact, see rate cuts as expected, it should be very, very good for crypto in stocks as a whole. Bullish catalyst number four is airdrops and the wealth effect. 2024, it is predicted that there's going to be a ton of different crypto airdrops. A ton of projects has been sitting on the sidelines holding out on launching a token until there was more favorable market conditions. And now that we're finally seeing some favorable market conditions, you can expect a lot of projects to launch and airdrop their tokens. And if you don't know what airdrops are, it's basically when a project or a protocol prints new tokens out of thin air and airdrops them to all the different users of that protocol. These tokens, before they airdrop them to users, are worthless. Like, they're just bytes of code. They have no value. They didn't pay any money for these tokens. But as soon as these tokens hit users' wallets, the market gets to decide what these tokens are worth. And typically, the market chooses to decide that these tokens have value. And like magic, typically billions of dollars of value is printed essentially out of thin air. To give you an idea, over 2023 alone, I made around $24,000 airdrop farming as a part of my private community, the Obsidian Council. And when it comes to airdrops or airdrop farming, you can think of it however you want. Like I'm not gonna get into all the ins and outs of how that works. But the end result and the whole point of me talking about this is that when users get all these extra funds, they typically feel a lot wealthy fear. And because of this, they're a lot more risk adverse and they typically go on like a buying spree, buying up NFTs, buying up different tokens and just allocating more into the space. And these buying sprees have the effect of pushing up the prices of a lot of these assets. And we saw something really similar to this back in 2020 before the 2021 bull run with yield farming, where a lot of these yield farming protocols were printing all these tokens. People were feeling really rich and they take these tokens, they go buy stuff and it ended up pushing up the prices of a lot of these assets. And with so many coming airdrops and just the massive success of airdrops lately, 
I'm expecting a similar type of effect in 2024. By the way, if you wanna join the private community that I mentioned earlier, the Obsidian Council, it's currently closed, but I'll be opening it back up next week to 100 new members. There's a wait list in the description of this video. Sign up if you're interested. And again, after we hit the 100 member cap, I'll be closing the group back up again. Bullish catalyst number five is changing retail sentiment. Retail still isn't interested in buying crypto, but soon they will be. The narrative around crypto is going through a major shift, and that's because Larry Fink and a lot of these TradFi companies, like we talked about earlier, are making sure of it. They're praising crypto on talk shows, running commercials and ads, and marketing these ETFs to their entire client base. They're essentially legitimizing crypto. For example, think of all the damage that was done post FTX's collapse. Mainstream news stories were constantly talking about crypto and it wasn't in a positive light. They were using words like scam, fraud, criminals, terrorists, etc. Those were the words used to talk about crypto for the entire past year. On top of that, there was a lot of very real pain as a lot of these retail investors jumped in at the top of the market and lost a lot of money. And it's really easy for retail to believe that crypto is a scam and a fraud, etc., when they lose a lot of money investing into it. And especially for those who know very little about crypto, when you have these people come on TV and talk about how crypto is dying and it's going to zero and it's never coming back, it's again, easy to believe those things when you don't know anything about the space other than you lost a lot of money and now people are telling you that it's run by terrorists and criminals. For these people, for a lot of retail, the Bitcoin ETF is really essentially the first time that they're learning that Bitcoin and crypto isn't actually dead. I've literally had family members text me and call me and say, hey, I heard that the founder of Bitcoin, Sam Bankman fried got arrested. Are you okay? Like, how are you doing? <laughs> There's a lot of retail that was certain crypto was over, that it wasn't coming back. And this is really the Bitcoin ETF, the first piece of evidence that's showing them that like, hey, maybe that might not be the case. However, although they might be intrigued that the price of Bitcoin has gone up and it has this ETF, that might be interesting to them. They're not like jumping back into crypto, not after like an entire year of being told it's a scam and a fraud. They're thinking to themselves, they did this thing before, they lost a lot of money. They're not gonna get tricked this second time. They know better. So currently retail is still in the disbelief stage of the market. They don't actually believe that Bitcoin and crypto are coming back. They think that this rally will likely fail like the others have. And there was a lot of crypto investors that were just expecting the masses to jump back into Bitcoin and crypto as soon as this ETF got approved. However, I personally expect it to be a slow thawing out process. Sort of like dominoes, I expect more and more people to slowly flip bullish on crypto as time goes on. And that's just because the average person tends to believe what they're told to think. They were told for a long time to believe that crypto was a scam and a fraud, so that's what they believe. However, now, they're being told that crypto and tokenization is going to revolutionize finance and change the world. And they're being told these things by the single most authoritative figures in all of finance, by literally Wall Street itself. And I can promise you again that you are not bullish enough on this one fact alone. Bitcoin has essentially unlocked the largest liquidity source on the planet at the same time that retail is slowly thawing out. And again, I think that sentiment isn't gonna flip all at once. It's gonna be a trickle that's just gonna slowly turn into streams and eventually turn into like a raging river that kicks off the entire bull market. Bullish catalyst number six is the Bitcoin halving. Many have completely forgotten because of the Bitcoin ETF, but the Bitcoin halving is just three months away. If you're unfamiliar with what the halving is, it's when the amount of Bitcoin that gets mined per block by Bitcoin miners gets cut in half. This happens every four years. And so far, historically, 100% of the time that we have seen a Bitcoin halving, it has kicked off a massive crypto bull run. And when I say 100% of the time, I mean, literally, there has not been ever a time where we've had a Bitcoin halving where it has not been followed by an epic crypto bull run. Never in history has that not happened. It's also usually a huge media event. Like the halving is like this thing that only happens every four years. It's great content for a lot of media organizations, a lot of influencers, a lot of people on Twitter. So again, they talk a lot about it and it brings Bitcoin to the forefront of people's attention. So the halving coupled with all this other stuff happening to me is another great indicator and a huge catalyst for the coming bull run that I believe is, is on the horizon. Bullish catalyst number seven is all the growth and innovation and actual building in the crypto markets that has happened over the last couple of years. Crypto has not been idle during the bear market. It has been building and improving, making things cheaper, easier, safer, faster, and just overall building new products and ideas. In this cycle, retail will come back and find that things are a lot easier to use than they were last go around. We have a ton of promising interop solutions like Across, 
Polygon shared sequencers that remove the headaches and pain that comes with having to switch between chains. For example, with something like Polygon 2.0's new ecosystem, you might not even realize when you're using multiple chains, it'll feel seamless and essentially like you're using the same chain as you switch between these various networks. We have better wallets like Rabi, where you don't have to manually add in networks or even switch the wallet does that for you. As well as it does simple things like loads up tokens automatically so you can see your entire portfolio across all networks within the same wallet. As well as it makes users safer and less likely likely to get hacked by giving them clear warnings, for example, when a transaction is potentially draining their entire wallet. In fact, it'll make you go through and acknowledge the warning before you can continue the transaction. Things to just overall make the user experience for a lot of these retail people coming on chain a lot safer and a lot easier. We have better DEX designs like CowSwap, which are MEV resistant and massively reduce slippage. Also in the case of CowSwap, it's a DEX aggregator. So it goes and it finds the best liquidity source for you. You don't have to go like figure out if you need to use SushiSwap or Uniswap or et cetera. It does all the work for you just finds you the best possible price. And for example, with something like CowSwap, soon they plan to go cross chain, making it so that whatever token you're looking for on whatever network, you'll be able to buy that token through one singular interface without having to go use like a million different DEXs. We have restaking coming from things like Eigenlayer, making it so that launching a new network is easy and secure. Plus things like L2 is making blockchains finally profitable and making it so it's easier to experiment with different concepts and ideas. All of this meaning that infrastructure is becoming less of an issue in the crypto space and there's a lot more focus on these builders who are actually building useful products and apps on top of these things. And while a lot of these chains already have really cheap fees, we have a lot of new solutions this cycle that make those fees even cheaper. For example, we have alternative DA layers like Celestia, Near, Eigen, as well as we have Ethereum's Dancun upgrade coming in a few months. And on the last note, we have things like Base Chain, or we have OKX's X1 chain, making it so that a lot of these retail users who maybe last cycle were primarily using just the exchanges can now get on chain really easily via a base in X1. Bullish catalyst number eight is crypto gaming. I've made quite a few different videos on crypto gaming and, and how it compares versus traditional gaming and why I'm really bullish on it as an overall concept. And if you wanna go watch those videos, I have my Immutable X video that goes in depth on that and I have my overall GameFi video that goes in depth on that. But the reason I'm really excited about 2024 is that a lot of these games that raised all this capital back in 2021 during the last bull run, it's taken a couple of years to actually develop these games. And now in 2024 and 2025, a lot of these games are finally ready to deploy. And these crypto games that are coming out look absolutely insane. The quality is leagues above the type of games we saw in 2021. And I believe we'll have some breakout hits in 2024 and 2025 that will prove the demand for crypto gaming and kickstart a crypto gaming bull run. Bullish catalyst number nine is the four year cycle. The four year cycle is heavily tied in with the halving, but it's worth mentioning as its own separate thing. Every four years, the crypto markets have essentially gone through the exact same cycle. And if you follow and believe in these cycles, then that would mean that 2024 and 2025 would be typically the bull phase of the cycle. Bullish catalyst number 10 is the potential to have a pro crypto administration in the US. It's no secret that the current administration has been insanely hostile towards crypto. However, with the 2024 election, that could potentially change dramatically. Crypto has been working really hard to fund pro crypto politicians. By the way, if you wanna know where your politicians and your state stand on crypto, there's great resources like Stand With Crypto by Coinbase, where you can actually see where a politician leans and their views on crypto. Crypto. So that means on a state level, on a Congress level, and potentially on a presidential level, we could see pro crypto candidates. I also think with the stakes so high and potentially it's looking like a Trump versus Biden rematch, we could see each side offering some form of stimulus. That is definitely not a very common view. I think I'm like one of the only people that has mentioned something like that. And although I think another round of stimulus checks would be really financially irresponsible, I just think that neither of the candidates would actually care. Like if it got them into office, I don't think they'd care and I don't see why they wouldn't do that. They're not gonna have to actually bear the burden of like cleaning up the mess after they're done. Whether it's Biden or Trump, it'll be their last four years in office and the consequences of them printing those stimulus checks will have to be cleaned up by somebody else. Again, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just looking at the incentives and saying, well, why wouldn't they do that? Maybe that's a possibility. Overall, obviously a pro crypto administration and potentially maybe wildcard Hail Mary stimulus checks would be very bullish for crypto as a whole. Bullish catalyst number 11 is that finally, there are quite a few sectors this cycle that have found product market fit when it comes to crypto. An easy example would be something like stable coins, which are the 16th largest holder of US treasuries. They hold more treasuries than countries like Germany and South Korea. Stable coins have become a pretty effective and useful transaction medium. You even have major companies like PayPal that are getting in on the stable coin game now. 
And stable coins are insanely profitable with companies like Tether making billions of dollars in profits in a single quarter. Another example would be the deep end sector. You have projects like Helium Mobile, which offer live 5G plans nationwide at a fraction of the normal cost. And you have projects like Akash providing GPU access to machine learning companies. Overall, it just seems like a lot of these crypto products are finally maturing and finding some sort of product market fit. And the last bullish catalyst is the tokenization of TradFi. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, the largest asset manager on the planet, has praised tokenization as the future of finance. He believes in the future all of traditional finance will be tokenized, and he wants BlackRock to be at the forefront of this trend. And where BlackRock goes, so too does the rest of TradFi. In reality, this concept and this trend will likely take a long time to play out. TradFi moves slow. It's going to take years and years and years to build the infrastructure, the regulation, etc., to actually make that a doable thing. But that doesn't stop people from front-running the narrative in 2024 and 2025, which I expect them to do. And like I said, long term, I do believe you are going to see TradFi start to tokenize different assets in this space, and it's going to slowly unlock all these sources of liquidity, all these new assets, and an entire new world of capital for the crypto space. And of course, further legitimize crypto and increase adoption. So there you go, my 12 bullish catalysts and why I believe we'll see a crypto bull run in 2024. As always, none of this was investment advice. None of this was me telling you to buy crypto or telling you like when you should buy crypto. You should always do your own research and blindly copying YouTubers is one of the worst ways to invest on the face of the planet. If this video is helpful, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments or anything that you feel should be added to this video, let me know in the comments below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell next to it to be notified each time I release a video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.